So come on, let's talk about yesterday because it was pretty mental, wasn't it? What an average size of fish, mate. I mean, like 46, but I thought the first one I caught was probably a 30 pounder and turns out to be 46. And then the, 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 the horrible catfish and then uh, the madness of the big one. Like, mate, when that come out up just out there, I was like, oh my God. It was just like, but it was so deep as well. It just come up, it was just massive. And then to get a double take and then the other one, like thinking, oh, it's a 30 pounder. And then that was 44 as well. It just, yeah, no, it's just, it's a average. mental place, isn't it? Yeah, it is a mental place. And then two for you as well, proper result. Yeah, it was looking pretty dire in my swim, to be honest. I hadn't seen anything, you know, I'd seen you'd had one and I was just getting itchy feet. And, um, and it was late in the afternoon, you know, I'd left it quite a while. I went for a, for a stroll and um, just I saw one come flying out in the waves, but it wasn't where I was standing. I couldn't. I wouldn't have been able to cast to it from where I saw it. Yeah. So I re round round to what I thought would be the closest position and then one come out again and I had it, you know, yeah. I knew where it was. And uh, yeah, fired a, fired a pop up out there and um, I don't know how long it was out there, but not not too long before you had your your first, no, you did a double take, didn't you? Yeah. So um, yeah, I came round here and then I had to run off, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, so yeah, my first one was 53 and uh, the second one, I, might have been 30, maybe not, like a high 20, low 30 uh, common, yeah. but. But I'm, I'm pleased I got bait out again last night. I put sort of three quarters of a bucket out, but I've had a roach already this morning on the middle rod for about a pound. I'm not going to put any more maize in. Now I've had roach um, and a bream yesterday. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to put boilies in from now on. Fishing like a hero today, but not catching anything. Sometimes that's the way it goes, you know. They're either there or and having it or they're not. Today, the sun is blazing hot, and although it's comfortable, much more, how do you put it, leisurely, but yeah, the activity has been none. You know, Dan's had some nuisance fish, but other than that, it's just been, mm. but I'm looking at it with a sort of the bigger picture, hoping for tonight, get some more bait in the water, because the next three days are overcast, so it's gonna be cooler, fish should be deeper, more inclined to feed, I hope. You know, today maybe they're supercharging, getting a bit of a solar power on board, and hopefully the next three days should produce something good. A couple of days ago when the sun was out, Dan used his time to go out in the uh, inflatable boat and have a look for spots, you know, go and look for fish, bait a few areas, you know, maybe for later in the session, just to, just to get an idea. It's a new lake, we don't know nothing about it, so you can learn a lot from a boat. What I've done myself today is I've taken out the, um, the bait boat with the echo sounder on, and what I've done is gone to the areas where I've caught fish and drove around my, the swim that I've been fishing and just, just trying to build up a picture of the topography out in front of me. And what was really interesting and that what I learned is that both of my fish came in 12 to 13 feet of water and both of them came, or so both of them, or three of them, come from pretty poor drops, you know, fishing in a little bit of weed. And what it appears is in 12 to 13 feet, there's some fresh weed growth and in the deeper water, there isn't any weed. So maybe that's the reason why I saw fish fish show there, you know, they were in the, the fresh weed, the natural food was there, and my single hook baits that were just cast to them were just perfectly placed on top of that weed. Down to Daryl, come in Daryl. Hello mate. Mate, it's gone from summer to winter in about an hour, isn't it? Yeah mate, as soon as that cloud come over it, it just dropped, didn't it? Yeah, I mean, it, Based on what happened uh, yesterday, it looks like it's good for a bite now. I'm assuming you, you're going to bait up again tonight, are you? Yes, mate. I'm going to put a, a bit in and hopefully the, the cooler weather that's coming in the next few days, hopefully they'll find it. Cool, cool. All right. I'm, I'm going to put a bit in tonight, not, not too much, and spread it around a bit more. No, no maize, just boil in a few tigers. I'll tell you what, I can't wait to get back to the G and uh, get in the warm, bit of nice food inside me. and. Uh, Nice warm bed for the night, it's going to make all the difference. Good night's sleep, a nice fresh as a daisy tomorrow. Absolute. Lovely. So this morning, I didn't really uh, feel it in the swim that I baited. I hadn't seen anything. I sort of feel like I was 
on the edge of what Dan's got going. So I've kept my eyes peeled, I've been having a wander around and I've just seen some fish at the other end of the lake. There's a lovely island with a sandbar coming off it and a fish has just crashed out over there. So I'm gonna be on my toes, I'm gonna get around there and get the rods out as quickly as I can and hopefully they're still there. Coming down, coming down. Down receiving mate, go ahead. I've got two two rods out. I'm gonna keep it pretty uh, low profile around here. I've seen a couple of fish. Um, I haven't got a lot of wa water to work with. Um, I've got two guys to my left who were fishing there yesterday, so I'm leaving them be where, where they were fishing as such. The weather is bang on, bang on for fishing. You know, so hopefully these, uh, these two guys next to me uh, in and out in the boat all day long and I'm pretty sure either or both of us are going to catch. Yeah man, definitely. Right, we'll keep us posted. Um, it looks wicked from over here looking at that little corner. It looks wicked, so uh, all the best mate, good luck. Roger that mate, good luck also, see you soon. Oh, what was that? Oh, it's going to happen. That's got to be a carp. Down to Daryl, coming Daryl. Hello mate. Mate, it has all properly come to life around here since I last spoke to you. I've seen one about 10 to 20 yards off the back of my area, probably I reckon just behind my right hand rod, 100% a carp. As I'm looking out, an absolute unit has come out down to the right, sort of about 50, 60 yards off the margin. Awesome stuff, mate. It looks like it's uh, the weather's turning them on. It looks wicked, mate. I tell you, it looks like it's going to go any second. <laughs> well, I've, uh, I've had my takes casting to show fish, so uh, I'm, I think there's every chance that you're going to get one. That's what I was thinking, mate. You know, I, uh, I just thought I've got a spare rod there. What would Daryl Peck do? He'd cast straight at it. So, uh, mate, if I catch it, it's on your rod. Right, well, good luck, mate. It looks like um, something's going to happen today, one way or another. Well, it's been a disappointing day today. The weather was absolutely smack on for a bite, almost identical to the day when we had loads of fish, um, and yet nothing has happened. I've even put a full frod out in really close because I saw a fish show there. Got his smack on the money straight away. Um, used the distance finder app and found a clear spot on it and went away on the rod in, it was exactly the right range so I put it back out and it absolutely slammed down again um, but that rod hasn't gone either um, and now we know we've got a few days of colder weather coming for the end of the session um, it could potentially snow, it says down to minus four, minus five at night you know maybe only five or six degrees during the day, northerly winds so it looks like we've had the best of the weather and that's what makes it so disappointing um, it may be that the colder weather actually switches the fish on. You know, last time when we caught them, it had gone from blazing hot the day before to absolutely hammering down and the fish turned on. And you know, two guys across the way from us um, using a boat, finding shallower spots, have had bites today when we've caught nothing. So they've obviously got it right, we've got it wrong, and uh, we need to look at what they're doing as well and maybe put that into our approach. And with the weather getting so much colder, who knows what the next few days are going to bring. We've been doing this day fishing for quite a few days now and it is starting to take its toll. The, uh, the early starts and all the effort and the late nights and everything. Both of us are starting to fall to bits. Daryl's got cold sores coming up. I woke up one o'clock this morning with really severe chest pains, thought something really bad was happening. Managed to get back to sleep but woke up this morning with a really tight chest and I think I've pulled a muscle um, through casting, at least I hope it's that anyway. Um, hence using the boat today, the remote control boat, first time of using it and I'm um, really, really not feeling it. Um, you know, the, the cast inside of fishing is so important to me and that feeling the lead down and 
and just the whole part of it, I'm just so, it's so ingrained in me, it feels so alien uh, to be using the boat. And to top it all off, there's no fish showing in this area. I've, I'm getting little pulls, even though I've got bigger hook baits on, I'm getting little pulls already, which suggests that all the problems I've had with the roach have not gone away. Even though I didn't put any bait in yesterday when I left, it appears that the small fish have descended upon this area and they're just not leaving it alone now and they're obviously pulling the rigs around. All things sort of considered, because I'm not feeding it up here, Daryl's been kind enough to say to move in next to him. The guys that were there yesterday have not come back. He's seen a fish show um, in the swim to his left um, at a sort of castable distance. I'm starting to feel a bit better in myself now. Still a bit sort of uh, tight in the chest. I, I guess I've pulled something, but I'm gonna have a go, get the cast out there, and I'll feel much better actually being on some fish rather than just sitting up here and really just waiting for, for nothing to happen. Yeah, boy. Yeah, mate. <laughs> Power of the flan, that is. That's a good flan, that was. Perfectly timed. A very uh, sociable bite. Let me eat my lunch first. What's it feel like? I don't know. I've just gained and got, I haven't really done a lot so far. I'll tell you what, Dan, if you move that right hand one, yeah, take, just it, off, just take it off the rest that. and just push it over to the right. Yeah, we're good, we're good. Let's just hope it's a carp and not a... It is a carp, mate. A grassy or a catfish or <laughs> some other crazy species that we've not had yet. Some other crazy creature. There's not a lot we ain't caught, is there? That's a carp, mate. Some funny silver flashing going on. No. <laughs> it's churning the bottom, mate. It is. Do you want that rod out of the way? No. Nah. It's all good. I want him in the net so I can recast and catch a bigger one. I want him in the net so I can cast out for the first time. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I know greed is good and everything, but come on. Oh yeah, come on. Come on, shoulders. Come on, shoulders. Come on. No. No, denied. <laughs> Access denied. denied. <laughs> Entry denied. <laughs> He's getting there. Good this carp fishing, isn't it? Yeah, and well, when it's going well, it's great, and when it's not, it's like. Well, after a couple of days of not a lot happening and loads of effort and what have you. That's why it's good. That's why it's good, yeah. It's the bad times that make the good times good, apparently. Yeah, this is the one. Here he goes. Get in that net. Get in that net. Face this way. Bye! Yeah. One of them, brother. Oh, yes. I think... Uh, Mate, look, it's deep. It's deep. Tell you. We should stake him out. You should get your rods out. Absolute. Absolute. <laughs> <laughs> that old peck, he's a god. What are you saying? No, he's not a 40. I thought he was bigger than that in the water. He is 36, 12. Well, mate, that's a, a good result. start, mate. A really good start. After a couple of blank days, that's, that's really good, mate. Yeah, mate. Let's Please don't poaching you up now next door. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's do some pictures, yeah? Yeah, mate. Mate, what a difference a bite makes. Yeah, the whole confidence was low for a little while, but uh, yeah, I'm feeling good and I think there's uh, every chance we'll get some more. Yeah, yeah, it was looking really good earlier on. It took me too many casts to get out, to be honest, but um, I'm, I'm happy with where I am now. I think I'm just beyond the bits you can see on Google Earth. There's some shallow areas off to the left and because the one you saw was well left from that swim, you know, I cast around with a marker lead a few times and it's just that that nice like, it's not gravel, 
it's just like firm sort of clay yeah. slash silk, whatever it is. But um, the lead plugs a tiny little bit and you think, oh, it's weed. And then that marker lead just glides. So you know it's, and then it locks up. It's about a rod length and it locks up in some weed. So I think I'm just over the back of those features, which is <clears throat> got to be a good place to start, isn't it? Yeah, well, the activity's there and you presented. That's, that's all you need to know, really. Well, we've got a few days left, mate. I mean, the weather's looking pretty naff, isn't it? Cold temperatures, um, northerly winds, um, which might play into our hands, mightn't it, if we're off the back of the wind? Yeah, the fish that we caught were on the back of the wind, and since it's changed, they've seemed to move over. So, yeah, I'm, I'm banking on them being out here, and hopefully we can generate something with a bit of bait. OK, all right, well, we'll carry on fishing singles until it gets nigh and dark, put a bit of bait out, and then hope we're getting here in the morning. Right and early, let's get in here. <laughs> Not had a bite this time of day, have we, before? No. We're obviously out there. Is your bite alarm still on, so we know if we've got you? No. No, right, mate, you'll be fine. But my lines are pretty down anyway. And I've got, like, I've got the, the butts of rum. Um, on the buzzer and the tips in the wall, like buried. It's down here under this tree, I think. I think yeah. yeah, I think we're good. Cool. Just there. Yeah, yeah. Sweet. That's a fair old boil that's just sent out there, bro. You never know, but. When I was gaining line, it seemed like I was gaining it too easy. Yeah, we might be through this wall, Joe. That's what the big one did to me. Banging its head a fair bit, though, isn't it? Yeah. Scat can do. think so? Yeah. Yeah. Little carp, though, mate. Yeah, mate. It's two more than I've had today. <laughs> it's the same one, isn't it? No, it's just a bit smaller. Oh, Boom! Got him! 3112. Check him out. Lovely 31 pounder. Part of a brace of 30s today. Moving on to showing fish this morning and banging out those singles. New goo combination. The orange and the pineapple. Smells like a tropical fruit juice. Lovely. That's it, that's it. You go over the top now. Yeah. Come on, baby. You are nailed, get in that net. Yes! First one for a while. Cheers, brother.
Well, after a few days without a bite, this has come at a very, very welcome time. 17 pounder, but who cares? Um, you can't decide how big they're gonna be when you're chucking it out 110 yards. So uh, it looks good for more out there as well. We saw a fish show just before this bite came. We've both got about a kilo of bait out that we put out last night. Just 20 mil fibre, spread it right out. When I've recast, I've put a fibre hook bait on. So I've put a match the hatch pop up on this rod um, in the hope of catching something bigger. Well chuffed with him, mate. I tell you, I felt like I've been spectating the last few days, but uh, finally, simply, simply lovely. <laughs> And the recast was a bloody good shot, sir. Thank you, my darling. Off you go. Yes. Without doubt, the most numerous feedback that I get from Thinking Tackle is people love the rig sections, they love the technical bits, um, so we're going to get super technical now. This is what's been doing the business for me here. It's a rig that you've probably seen on Masterclass, you would have seen it um, on other Thinking Tackles, you know, shot all the way around the world um, because it is so versatile and it works so brilliantly. So it's basically a helicopter rig coupled with a stiff boom section um, and then a pop up. And uh, this one is either called the Ronnie rig um, or I call it the spinner rig, and basically it centers around a quick change ring swivel there that the hook is clipped onto. So it keeps the hook really close to the lake bed, um, but makes it spin and catch hold really aggressively, more aggressively than any other rig that I've ever used. That's attached to, in this case, hybrid stiff, but I've been catching on the boom as well, which is a fluorocarbon material, which is even stiffer than this. I like this one particularly because it's got a braided core to it and a stiff outer coating. It means you can crimp it. It's the only coated material we do that you can crimp, um, but it's really, really durable. And if it's snaggy out there at all, this will stand up to the snags really well. So that's what I started with. And that's the rig that I had the big one on, sort of about five inches long like that, a little bit of putty, underneath that quick change spinner swivel. I want the pop-up sinking fast because it's weedy out there. I want it to find its way in between the fronds of weed. If it's really critically balanced, it can come down and just rest in the weed and end up sitting quite high off the bottom. Now the hook is a Kamakura, which means it's super, super sharp and it's a wide gape X in size four. We are fishing for monstrous fish here and a strong hook like that, that's one wire gauge up from a normal wide gape. You know, I've never opened one of these out, even on massive fish. You know, so I can use that with complete confidence and every fish has been absolutely nailed. The bait is attached via a little tiny micro ring swivel and that's, it's, that's stopped uh, just sort of three quarters of the way up the hook just by a hook bead. Um, the bait itself, 14 mil IB pop-up, that is really, really important. The size and colour and attractors in the pop-up are so, so important. You know, we, we use these all the time, all the way around the world and they work absolutely everywhere. IB is a brilliant flavour combination. It's a brilliant colour as well, that sort of egg yolk yellow, not too bright not too dull, just absolutely perfect. And I've just secured that on just literally with a bit of floss through the bait and then cut it off fairly short and burn it and flatten it off. And that doesn't come off even at 120 yards. So that is the hooking arrangement. Onto the lead system itself, it's a lead core leader, which is super, super durable. I don't like to use long lead core leaders that, you know, they don't cast very well. And I think if you snap off and leave the fish trailing that, the longer it is, the more difficult it is for the fish to get rid of everything. So I like to keep them reasonably short so they cast really well and they camouflage superbly on the bottom. This one is the gravel and um, sand colored one and for out there on that kind of bottom that is absolutely perfect it's just striped different colors which helps break up the outline of the lead core I've just spliced it at either end and at this end you can see I've got one of the heli safe so I'm dumping the lead we're playing very very big fish there is some weed out there although we've not had problems it's worth losing the lead if you've got a 70 pounder on the end you'd much rather the lead came off and you landed that fish because it comes up higher in the water so the top bead here the no trace bead basically that will pop off if the line does unfortunately snap and the lead is still on and the hook link will get off the end of the lead core leader so the fish is away from the dangerous bit you don't want it dragging the lead around any sort of distance at all it can get snagged up in stuff tether the fish to a snag and then it's in real trouble so i use that no trace bead every single time i fish a helicopter rig and in this situation it's set maybe a foot up 
from the lead, just in case it goes into any weed. Basically on the cast, that will fly up and hit that top bead. As it drops through the water, it will stay up at that top bead, and that means at least a foot of that lead core leader and the lead can disappear into weed and still leave the hook link on top. So that is the rig we're using. It casts perfectly. I haven't wound a single tangle in throughout the whole session, and that is so important. When you're using little tiny hook baits like that at real extreme range, you do not want any tangles. Anybody that's fished at range before and experienced tangles will know it fries your brain if you start winding tangles in. This one with either the hybrid stiff or the boom material is so good for anti-tangle. It's my number one choice for this sort of fishing. Well, the sun is trying to poke through the clouds. Um, it's mid-morning. It looks like we should have caught more. Something is going on out there because there are slicks on the surface, um, which basically indicates that the fish are eating the bait we put out last night, which was coated in hemp oil. And what happens is as the fish chew the boilies, it releases the oil, they come up to the surface and creates a flat spot on the surface or a dark area on the surface. That drifts off along the wind and uh, I can clearly see it in front of me. It's drifting past my sort of area, so it's coming off of Daryl's baited area and it's such a good indicator and it wouldn't surprise me at all if Daryl gets a couple of bites this afternoon, maybe even more than that. Yesterday he was fishing singles and so managed to snare a couple of fish like that, um, but the area he's fishing is a little bit shallower than where I'm fishing, probably five feet shallower and it's a nice sandy area. You can imagine in the daytime, as the sun comes out, the fish could move up on, onto that area. If they're eating those boilies now, once they've eaten their way through them, I would be expecting to get a bite, maybe even a double take. If he doesn't catch anything, bearing in mind yesterday he was using singles, maybe then the fish has switched onto the bottom baits. He's got higher track pop-ups over the top of it, you know, and, and they're avoiding them because they'd rather eat the bottom baits, but we don't know. You know, you might get two or three bites this afternoon. So one way or another, it's a brilliant indicator. Putting the hemp oil all over your baits before you put them in. If you can do it the day before, it will soak right into them. And then as soon as that slick starts up in your swim, you know something's happening. Weeded up or snagged up. Oh, here we go. We're out. I don't think it's a carp. It's not a carp. It's too small. Well, not exactly what we're after, the old uh, park bench, but um, there's been some oil slicks coming off the bait and uh, Dan was convinced I was about to catch a carp. And it might have been these little things eating the bait, but I'm um, going to get the rod back out there straight away because the uh, sun's out, looks good on the back of the wind and you never know. <laughs> we're here for the 30 keys. Sign of the time zone, mate, isn't it? Yeah, Sign we're here for the, the 30 times. keys, not the 30 pounders. Absolutely nailed on, as usual. So what was this on the outside or the inside of that rod? On the inside, to the right of it. To the right of it, right. On the shallower water? On the shallow, on that marshal shelf of that little island. Go on, get to that net. It's absolutely nailed on. It's in. Here he goes. Boom! Yeah. Good gotcha. work. Gotcha. <laughs> right, let me have that. You take this, put that back how you want it. Thank you, sir. I'll let this go out of the net so I can have a little play. <laughs> What is that? The biggest rod in history. Oh my God. You've got to see the size of this rod. Martin Bowler who? 
Is that a rod? It's a roach. Uh, no, no, it's a rod. Yeah, you're dead right. It's a rod. It's the, mouth. It's the biggest rod I have seen. Rooney would be jumping for joy to catch that, wouldn't he? Hook well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh, let him go. Lovely creature. I want a picture. <laughs> Do you want a picture? I want my phone. It's been a funny old day, mate, isn't it? Oh dear. <laughs> How many species you had today? I think three or four tench. Rudd hybrid thing. Yeah. I lost the rudd hybrid thing. I think I lost the tench and I've had a cart and been bitten off by a pike. <laughs> I cracked off. Yeah. It's all happened, didn't it, today? We've had, we've had local interest as well, haven't we, from uh, the, uh, the Garde de Peche. Millions of people put the back of the swim all yeah. day long. That is the thing, I mean, obviously we get off fish here because the fish are here, but, you know, I liked it round there more when we had no human traffic. It was quiet, wasn't it, round there? Yeah, it was nice, but you've got to do what you've got to do, and the fish are definitely on this side of the lake, it seems. And when those slicks were coming up out there, like this morning, I was felt sure you were going to get multiple bites, you know, and, and you did, but it was free tench, yeah. you know. Um, but then a carp afterwards, also having rowed out and gone long, right over the top of it all, and then what, the only rod that remained out there, you had a carp bite on an hour later. Don't make any sense, does it? No, you think you'd just scare them off. But... Yeah. So baiting wise, you, are you going to put more out tonight, or are you going to leave it? You know, do you think do you think that bait's brought the tench in? Uh, yeah, I, th I think the, the the oil has brought the tension. That's what I'm what I'm thinking. I definitely want to put some bait out there. Fishing singles for big ones is okay, but it's also you've well, got to be on on a pack of them, aren't you? It's got to be blackness out there if you're going to catch them on singles. Yeah, I think if you put a bit of bait out there, naturally the bigger greedy ones are the ones most likely to react to the bait as such. And yeah, I think with a couple of days to go, not heavy baiting, but a little bit, maybe a couple of kilos, you know, and, right. and, and spread it out. Right. Okay. I think I'll do the same, mate. Follow your lead, as usual. <laughs> okay, Daryl. This morning, you know, we've only two days to go. We've both made the change, you know, we've gone for bigger hook baits. I am not one that believes in the baiting pyramid, you know, the, the feeding, the bream and the roach and the tench, get them all on the spot and then the carp arrive. No, that is not what I'm about. The, the thought of reprocessing rods when you're fishing at long range like that is just not the one, you know, you're tying fresh rigs, you're sharpening hooks. It's just, I don't want to be making that disturbance in the swim. I want my rig sat there for when a carp comes and you forget, you know, we fish in the UK for, for 150 at a time. There's herds of 50s out here, you know, and the these pop-ups that we've changed to, they're only 20 mil in size. It seems massive to what we're used to, but in the, in the grand scheme of things, they're not big at all. They're probably the perfect size for a really big fish. After a quiet morning, it just didn't feel right in the swim next to Daryl, and with only one and a half days left to go, I had to make a move. Amazingly, it looked like some fish were in the teeth of a howling northerly that absolutely chilled to the bone. With it being so windy, I just couldn't feel for the drop with mono, so I switched to sinking braid with a mono leader to make sure I was definitely on a clear spot. The donk of the lead was so positive, I wish I'd used braid earlier, but for now, I was confident this move and change of tactics would bring me much closer to a take. Around midday, I was pretty sure I saw a fish show out in front of this swim on the spot that I'd put the fourth rod on several days ago and uh, I couldn't be certain, a great big spray came up. There was no cormorant over here and the spray that came up was just too big, I think, to be a cormorant, but I, I didn't see the fish, so I didn't move on that. I kept watching, 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 and then Darrell and I both saw the same fish in almost the same area. I just think they've stayed here and they, they've just not been bothered. We're gonna, we're gonna do the last few hours. It's uh, just gone three now, so um, I've got about four hours left to go. We nick one big one, it's mission accomplished. Drop back again. Don't think it's a carp. Don't think it's a carp. Feels a bit catfishy, but <sighs> a bit 
There's a boil coming up. I think it is a carp, you know. <sighs> Loving this sub braid to um, taper touchdown combination. Just a really positive bite, but feeling the lead down is the most important thing. Even in this wind, I'm feeling it down all right. Oof. And uh, having the touchdown leader on means that now when the fish is in close, it's like playing the fish on mono again. So you've got a bit of uh, shock absorption and also uh, obviously less visibility down near the rig. Come on, get in that net. Boys, got him, come on. Yeah, man. Yeah, check that out. 34 pounds an ounce is this one, a proper French bar of gold. And this, as all the others have been, was taken on a little IB pop-up, 14 miller. Um, and this one was soaked in the Wonderberry goo on my favourite spinner rig with a size 4 wide gape X sharpened Kamakura style. Awesome. It's always a buzz driving to the lake in the morning, pitch black, you know, you're hoping there's going to be nobody there in the swims that you want. And with the techno turned right up and following the vans, you know, in a bit of a convoy, it's always a buzz not knowing what's going to happen. Michael Jackson! Well, I was really doubting anything was going to happen. You know, I hadn't seen anything, but I put my rod where I'd seen, um, seen a fish a couple of days ago, really long range in the bait boat. Put out one of those massive gobstoppers, the old 20 mil pop-up with um, the orange goo and the pineapple and just completely out of blue. It is bust off. It feels a bit odd on the braid at long range. I've hardly gained any line on it. Go on, Daryl. Get it in. First take for a few days. The weather has been, you know, as bad as it gets, really. Freezing cold, north, northwest winds, um, minus temperatures at night. Yeah, it's been, it's been grim. This will be such a result if he gets this. The one for the road as such will go down nicely. Seems crazy, but I'm paranoid losing it. Got a size two on there, which is an absolute monster hook for me. Size two under a 20 mil pop up. Come on. Really is warm, you know, and that's half the reason why I picked this swim is um, obviously I've seen a fish out there a couple of days ago, but that wind is so horrible, I thought that the flat water where I took the boat to was a, a really good option, you know, somewhere where the fish might be. And I put it in relatively shallow water for the lake, um, 12 foot deep on the echo sounder on the bait boat, and just dropped a single massive pop-up out there. And uh, something has found it. Let's just hope it's a big fat carp and not something silly like a catfish. Come on. It's all getting a bit tense. Round to his left, he's getting his net. Oh, it's a massive catfish. No. 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 No, I thought it felt weird. Ah, oh, no. 
No! Look at it. Prehistoric monster. Let's see if it can go in. Oh, no, he's going to fall out. Yes! He's got it. He's got it. He's got it. He's got it. Oh, mate. Right. Get on the old walkie talkie to Daniel. Come in, Daniel. Come in. <laughs> Yeah, bruv, I was watching the whole thing on the binos. Go on. Uh, I reckon 60 or 70 pounds. Yeah! Get in, man! On the donkey chokers. Yeah, man. <laughs> oh, mate, you hero! You hero, right? I'm winding him. No, no, no. <laughs> Geez. Sorry, mate, I missed that. Go again. It's a catfish, mate. Oh, no! Yeah, mate, it's uh, a massive black catfish. It just, I thought it was a massive carp all the way in and then it just popped up, big black slug. Oh, man, I know how you feel. Oh, gutter, gutter. Man. 60 or 70 pound, I thought that was it. Just rewards. <sighs> Feels like a carp. <sighs> Come on. Be good to me. <sighs> Feels like a good one. Mate, this is just epic in this weather. <sighs> Played it quite hard because there's a snag down to the right, but it looks like it's past it now. <sighs> it's a car, once you've seen it, it's definitely a car. Definitely a car. Get in that net! Get in that net! Yes! Yes! Get in! Oh! Oh! Oh, man! All the effort has paid off. Get in! When you've not had a fish for a while and you've been trying really hard, when you finally do get one and it goes in the net, but just the feeling of elation is just amazing you're so present you're so in the moment and um, you know people often say that I overreact when I get one in the net and I can't be that happy all the time but I promise you I am Dan to Daryl coming Daryl coming mate mate I've only just had one and it's a carp Whee! <laughs> middle rod mate the one cast down to that spot where I saw the fish a few days ago yeah, good angling, man, that. Very good angling. Yeah, man, can you believe they're on this northerly wind? It's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, no, I wouldn't have betted on it. I'd have bet against it, hence why I'm sitting around here on the back of it. Catching giant slugs. <laughs> Talking to giant slugs, I ain't put him back yet. I haven't had a chance. There's still time for another one. We've got a few hours left. That's it, mate. Get it back out there. Dan has caught one, and in these conditions, that is a mega, mega result. You know, he, um, he saw a fish show a couple of days ago, and that is all we've had to go on. You know, he's managed to move on to that, 
and that, that one sighting or two sightings that he saw that made him move over there, that has been the catalyst for what has happened. So poor conditions, tough conditions, but he's, uh, he's angled well and he's caught a lovely common. Okay. Are you a 30 pounder? Oh, just 30 pounds, eight ounces. Forget it. Yeah, man, check that out. One epic way to end our adventure in central France. Just a fitting end to loads and loads of effort. A stunning, stunning 30 pound common. And I just want to say thanks to Daryl. He's always an inspiration to fish with, always an education. I always fish harder when I'm with him. And uh, thanks also to the crew, to Scotty Boy, um, to Lewis, AKA Bubble, and also to Chris, who's come all the way from Germany to help us film this. And last but not least, thanks to James, who's fed us for the last nine days. The food has been absolutely epic, almost as good as the fishing. And one last dedication, I want to dedicate this fish and the show to Len Gerd, who sadly passed away this month. An absolute legend of English carp fishing, created so many amazing fisheries like Linear and Elstow, which remains my favourite water in the UK. You'll be sorely missed, Len, and thanks for all the amazing fishing you've provided for us. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the bank sometime. <laughs>